Welcome back, massage nerds. I am so excited for today's video. Look at this amazing kids. I'm gonna be showing you today how to massage kids. And because it is October, we decided to make it like a Halloween theme. And also, since we live across the border, we decided to do it, uh, celebrate the Day of the Dead. So I'm gonna introduce you. This is Miguel. This is Mama Melta. I am Grandma Coco. And this is Frida Kahlo. So I am going to be showing them a little bit of Tai Chi, a little bit of uh, how to de-stress. So we're going to go outside and we're going to do self-massage and some Tai Chi moves. Follow us. Okay, so now I'm going to show them some Tai Chi moves. These really help them relax. If you do these moves in the morning, they give you energy. If you do them in the evening, they help you relax. So I'm just going to show them something very basic, something very simple. So what we're going to do is let's flap like birds. Let's fly, guys. Put, open up, uh, spread your, your feet apart like a foot, and then just fly like a bird. Go up and down. Flip, flop your wings like you're flying through the sky. Flying, letting all that energy come to your fingertips, and then turn your wrist three times two, three, and let's fly again. Get on your tippy toes, come up and fly like a bird. Feel that wind running through your wings. And again, turn your wrists. Now we're gonna do the tossing the ball. So like you have a ball, like you're holding a ball, put your left foot forward. And just like if you're passing a ball to somebody in front of you, Feel that energy coming back to you. Breathing in and exhale and just throwing the ball out there to somebody else. And then you reverse the ball back. Bring it back to you again, towards you. Bring all that energy back to you. And you can do these about three times each movement and this is good enough to get their energy flowing and going. And then you come back again to the center. Now we're going to fly like eagles over the mountains. How many, who know, who likes the eagles? You guys like the eagles? I know you like eagles. Let's fly like eagles. Put again, your left foot forward, and then you're going to fly high, stretch. Stretch your arms and fly over the mountains like the eagles, like the mountain tops. Think of yourself as big and flying through the clouds and the sky. Imagine like you can fly anywhere in the world, anywhere you would like to fly to. Fly as high as you can. You can do these movements three or four times, really gets the energy flowing. And then you come back and you stop. And you can do it again. You can do one side on the left and one side on the right with a foot forward. Now I'm gonna show them self-massage and this is really good to get your energy flowing this is like a tai chi also massage so this is what you're going to do guys first you're going to rub your hands together really good get your energy flowing then you're going to rub your left hand left hand rub your left hand then your left arm rub it really good then go to your other hand and then your arm Rub it really good, get your energy flowing, giving yourself a little massage. Then your shoulders, cross your arms right here. Oh, making you sleepy and relax already. Massage your shoulders and your chest. Now your belly, like when you have a belly ache, clockwise, yeah, like this, turning it like a clock. There you go, that's, you always wanna go like a clock. Rub it really good, like to help you relax and helps with digestion. Now you put your left foot forward and massage your left leg or your right leg and then down, go down, do the bottom part. Now you go to the other leg. Massage, massage your leg. If it hurts, get that energy flowing, then the bottom part. Now you do the little spiders walking on your head. Little spiders, little raindrops falling on your head. And we, oh, they're relaxed already. Now, normally we would massage our face, but they have paint on. So now we're just gonna rub our hands together. All that energy that you collected, now it's on your hands. And you're just gonna put it right in front of your face and get all that good energy back in you. 
So this little massage really helps them to get energized and to get their chi flowing, their energy going. So something very simple that you can teach them in five minutes, doesn't have to be too long. So now I'm gonna show the children some um, finger holds. And this comes from my Capacitar International training. I was very fortunate and blessed to have Dr. Patricia Kane uh, come teach here in El Paso. She has brought this program here to uh, Texas for 10 years. She travels all over the world teaching some of these techniques. So I'm going to share the link with you guys so you can look it up. This is where you can find some of the Tai Chi moves, some of the finger holes. She does everything from polarity therapy, breath work, head holes, finger holes, and uh, Tai Chi. So check it out. It's really a valuable tool to teach your children. And there's for adults too. It's not just for children. But her motto is heal yourself so that you can heal others. So I'm going to show them how to do some finger holes, and they all relate to different fingers. We all have feelings. We all have emotions. What are some of the feelings that you have sometimes that you deal with? Stressed? Nervous? Nervous? Shy. Shy? Okay. So I'm going to show you how to deal with feelings. Remember, feelings come and go. I think it's very important to show our children how to manage their feelings. There's no bad feelings. There's no good feelings. They're just feelings. Feelings of anger, sadness, all of that, happiness. They're just feelings. They come and go. They flow like the ocean, like the waves. There's neither bad or good. Sometimes they're bigger waves, and sometimes they're smaller waves. So don't be afraid of your feelings. They're normal, and I'm going to show you how to manage some of these fin uh, manage some of these feelings. And what they are is finger holds. And they all relate to different meridians. It doesn't matter whether they hold the right or the left. As a matter of fact, I actually do some of the finger holds, like for fear when I go to the dentist, that's my worst nightmare. So nobody needs to know when you're holding your fingers. Nobody needs to know that you're feeling anxious or stressed or happy or whatever it is you're feeling at the moment. Because all you do is hold your finger and you know take deep breaths and that's all you got to do so they're very simple i do them every day you can teach your children you can teach a, a, you know if you have a child that's crying or an adult that you know uh, that needs some comforting you can go ahead and share these techniques i also like to incorporate some essential oils and i have two different ones i have the lavender and eucalyptus and this and defense shield and these are very good to help them calm down like lavender is very soothing for headaches for muscle aches eucalyptus is very good for chest congestion for breathing the defense shield is very good for like colds or to keep up your immune system so i like to spray a little bit you can mix this with a cup of water hopefully distilled water and anywhere from one to five drops you never want to use the direct oil especially on children okay and these are products by isogenics i'll give you the link below if you want to get some essential oils these finger holes really help you so i'm going to start with a thumb you can hold either one and just listen to my voice and i'm going to talk you through it so first you're going to grab your thumb okay so you hold your thumb, and the thumb is for tears, for sadness. When you're feeling sad, if you're feeling sad, somebody hurt your feelings, then you can hold your thumb, nobody has to see you, and you take deep breaths. So take a deep breath in, and exhale through your mouth, and take another deep breath in, and just feel all that sadness and all those tears that you might be feeling inside. Just Feel that, and then when you exhale, let it all go. Let all those tears come out. Let all those feelings of sadness come out, because now when you exhale, they're gone. Now the next finger is for when you're feeling afraid. If you're ever afraid of something, if you're moving to a new place, a new school, and you're not sure, or if sometimes parents travel, and you know you feel a little bit afraid, then just go ahead and hold your second finger, your index finger and just take a deep breath take a feel that fear and as you exhale exhale all that fear that you feel inhale again and exhale exhale all that fear that you're feeling okay one more time inhale and exhale the fear 
The middle finger is for when you're upset, you're angry. Somebody upset you, you're mad, either a big brother or sister was picking on you, or you know, the kids said the school didn't want to talk to you, they were mean to you. So you can hold your middle finger and feel that, what that feels like. What does it feel like to be angry? So then you take another deep breath, feel the anger, and just let it out, let all that anger out. And another deep breath, Breathe in and let it out and take another deep breath. Do this three times. Take a deep breath, feel the anger, and then exhale all the anger. Now the next finger is for anxiety. When you're feeling anxious, you might be having a test coming up. You don't know how it's going to go. Or you might be really anxious about, who, who said anxious? One of you said anxious, right? that you feel anxious. So if you ever feel anxious, just hold your finger and breathe in and feel that, what it feels like, the anxiety, and then just breathe out the anxiety. Breathe in confidence and strength and breathe out the anxiety. One more time, breathe in and breathe out the anxiety. And the last finger hold is for when you're feeling shy, when you don't feel like you're enough, when you feel that nobody loves you, when you feel like you're insecure. So hold your little pinky and feel all those feelings of insecurity or feeling small, of not feeling like you're enough or nobody noticing you. So then you take a deep breath and inhale in and let all that insecurity out. And now breathe in again. Breathe in the confidence and the beautiful person that you are and then exhale all the negative feelings. Breathe in one more time and exhale. And that you can go either one. You can either hold your right hand or your left hand. You can do this, like I said, when you're in school before you take a test. So now you cross one foot over the other cross one foot over the other and then put your fingertips together and feel that energy that from holding your fingers. There you go, Make, like this. Just feel that. You might feel a little buzzy. You might feel some energy flowing through your fingers and that is perfectly okay. So now you rub your fingers together one more time and put that good energy back into you. And those are the finger holes. So now you've learned something new. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how you massage kids. Well, first thing that you have to do is get a parental permission. So we have a form that the parent has to give out and sign to make sure that you can massage their child. The parent also has to stay in the same room with you. The mom can't go shopping or I'll be right back. I'm going to go get food or I'm going to go get gas. No, they must be in the room with you. And don't forget to ask the, the child's permission. You know, it's good to ask them. And you want to use simple words with, with them. You don't want to say, oh, I'm going to massage your scapula or anything like that. And you're going to say, you know, is it okay if I, you know, rub your arm? And get the permission. I feel that kids as young as three years old can really understand. So make sure you get their permission. Another thing that you must remember is that kids really can't lay down for that long. Massage is typically 20 minutes to half an hour, depending on the child. You do have squirmy kids, and if they get too squirmy, you might want to go to a different area. So it's very important that you're in tune to their signals. And if mom or dad are in the room with you, and if they see that their child is feeling uncomfortable, maybe with a certain move, then it's up to you guys, parents, to speak up and let the massage therapist. Like, I don't think he or she likes that. Another thing to keep in mind is you don't want to use any CBD or strong odors, you know, like a strong, like oregano uh, essential oil. You want to keep it light, something that's pleasant for them. Obviously, like I said, no CBD oils. And uh, another thing that you can do is make sure that you're always, that they're always covered and draped. And what I have them do is they wear a tank top 
and shorts and that's important so make sure that you ask if they have allergies too because sometimes children may have allergies to a certain scent i knew of somebody that was allergic to lavender so they had a reaction so make sure that you ask the parent or you know if the child's old enough now obviously the older the child maybe the more they can handle but if you have a younger person you know uh, less than let's say seven or six maybe 20 minutes and somebody you know a little bit older will be able to handle the 30 minutes always make sure parents if you are going to be massaging your children and massage therapists should already know this it's on the limbs the arms and the legs you always massage towards the heart so that's a very important rule i'm giving you and showing you tips that maybe you parents want to try at home and you're welcome to do that but just make sure that when you are using uh, massage techniques on their arms, it's always towards the heart. You can do the light ones going down, which these are called the uh, nerve ending strokes. You can do them going down. The reason that we do towards the heart when you use a little bit of more pressure is because the veins have valves and they close when the blood flows through. So they close and you don't want to push against those valves because they're always returning the blood towards the heart. So on the legs, the legs and the arms, make sure you go towards the heart. The back, it doesn't matter. And the stomach, remember, is always clockwise. So I'm gonna show you a mommy Melda how to massage her arms and how to massage her limbs. And like I said, no deep pressure, okay? Uh, no deep tissue massage on kids. You don't wanna hurt them and nothing really strong smelling. You can do your effleurage. You can do your regular petrissage very softly and gently. They really like the flow when it's a little slower. Unless you have an athlete that maybe is going to go run and they need to do a little bit faster. And do their forearm. Don't forget that you always want to do your nerve ending strokes and I like to make them fun when I'm working with kids so I like to do the car wash just like if you're going to the car wash and it's washing your car. You can do these three times. You can do the little spider kisses just a little tapping up and down their arm or you can do the angel kisses and you can do the kitty scratches. Just get your the back side of your nails and do a little bit of scratches. So make sure that you always end with nerve ending strokes. You can massage the wrist, each finger. And they always like getting their hands massaged. They really enjoyed that. And it really helps them to relax. So now I'm going to move to her leg. And you want to make sure that you tuck in like right at the leg, like around the knee. And she is wearing her black shorts underneath. So you want to make sure and make them feel comfortable. You can start at the foot. especially kids that play sports. You know, they're up on their feet all day. Like she's a soccer player, so I know her legs hurt sometimes. And I know her tibialis anterior was hurting, so you can go gently. Remember, no deep pressure. I felt her tighten up the minute I went a little too deep right here. I felt her tighten up, so I'm sensitive enough to have felt that, so I wanna make sure and back off. But um, also the client can let you know Give them permission to tell you, say, oh, let me know if it's too much or if you don't like something or even if you like something so I can do it again. 
So you want to make sure go around the knee, the quads. So that's the petrissage, effleurage now. You can do a little friction around the knee. And again, you can do the car wash when you're done. The little spider kisses that usually tickle. She's in a trance now, I can tell. <laughs> the little angel kisses. There's just a little bit of tapotement with your fingertips. And the little kitty scratches. And they really enjoy those nerve ending strokes. I think with children, they really appreciate the nerve ending strokes more. It really helps them to relax. So now that she's in the prone position, again, you want to make sure and tuck the sheet in like around the knee and then pull it all the way through where her foot is exposed. I want to show you the back of the leg because I know that since she is a soccer player, her legs have been hurting her. And remember, parents and massage therapists, you always go towards the heart, always towards the heart. And here you can do your petrissage, which is kneading. You can do full-handed kneading with both hands or your finger kneading. You can go cross fiber. This one feels good too. Going cross fiber really gets the blood, stagnant blood out of the muscles. And always do your effleurage for transition. You don't wanna go up too high. You know, she is wearing her shorts, but you don't wanna go too high on the leg, maybe mid thigh with kids. I call this the plow, like somebody's plowing the back of your legs. And it's always fun. When you call these strokes different names for kids, they like that. So now we're doing the car wash. And we're doing the spider kisses. The kitty scratches. and the angel kisses. So this is a little bit of tapotum in there, just to get the blood flowing. And then you can do her foot, the bottom of her foot. We have the kidney meridian here. So we have meridians. I like to work with meridians, just like when we did the finger holes, they all have to do with meridians. You wanna do one toe at a time. A little bit of reflexology, all the head, this is the reflex to the head. From the third of the foot up are reflexes to your upper body. From the middle part of your uh, foot is the middle part of your body. And from the heel down, it's all the reflexes to the lower part of your body. So when you work the bottom of the foot, it has to do with a certain organ. So you can mas massage every part of the bottom of the foot and it'll reflect to an organ. Like these are the sinus points. I like to do each toe at a time and then go across, stimulate the kidney meridian. And just really over, it's really good for their, you know, for their feet because kids are up most of the time walking and running, especially when they play sports. Make sure you get the ankles and the Achilles tendon real gentle. The main thing to remember about the arms and the legs is to massage towards the heart. In the back it doesn't matter, but in the limbs it does. So now I'm going to show you how you can work the shoulders and the head. You know, be very gentle, but you can do circular motions all around the occipital ridge right here. You can really do a good head scratch. Make sure you're good to get the sagittal suture on top of the head. This is very important right here. 
And just remember, this is more for relaxation and to get the blood circulating. You can do their ears. And I would do his face, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. But some of the things that you can do on the face, I like the little spider kisses. You can do the effleurage, you know, and you can just figure out some things that you can do on the face. So now I'm going to get my regular oil. Remember, you don't use CBD oil on the kids, so I just use the regular Glide oil. And I'm going to get his shoulders and in between the scapulas. What I'm doing is I'm going up the scapula. Not too much pressure. Remember, you don't do deep pressure on kids. This is not uh, about going really hard. You ask them to take a deep breath and relax. You can turn the head to one side. And mainly you can use fingers so it's a little bit more soothing and slow. Their bodies are so tiny. <laughs> so I'm used to big bodies. Turn the head the other way. And now the other side. So once you're done with the shoulders, see how long, you know, you can work on them, five to 10 minutes. And I would like to show you how to do some abdomen work. So when you are gonna work on the abdomen, you wanna make sure and always go clockwise. Remember, you wanna go ascending, transverse, and descending colon. This is really good for uh, kids that have tummy aches, you don't want to press hard. You just want to get the stomach going. If they are having a little bit of issues with constipation, you want to make sure and go down to the descending colon on the left side. You can make sure and go underneath the ribs here to get to the diaphragm so that they can breathe better. You know, you could do just very gentle strokes, you know, very soothing. If you, have, if you have cinnamon, it's really good for tummy aches, but you never want to use cinnamon directly on the skin. So you can have a carrier oil, and it's a warm oil. Remember, cinnamon is a warm oil, where eucalyptus is a cool oil. So you just want to go clockwise. You can do also a cross from here and really stretch and even get the ribs right here. And then you want to end it with a clockwise motion, rubbing your hands together and just putting some good healing energy into their tummy, especially if they have a tummy ache. So now I'm going to show you the, how to massage the back and we switch and this is Frida Kahlo now. So you want to start with long, smooth strokes on the back, just kind of gentle to start helping them relax. You know, I like to be right here and do a little petrissage on their shoulders. Go all the way across the shoulders, do some petrissage. You can also go around the angel wings. She's got little angel wings, which for us, that would be the scapulas. So we go around and like, remember, no deep tissue pressure on kids. Okay, so you can go around the other angel wing and another one that I like to do is the snake 
crawling on her back. She's squirming. She's laughing. The little snake crawling on her back. <laughs> and it's okay. If you have squirmy kids and they calm down, that's fine. And I also like to do like the little stomping on the back. I call this the elephant stomping on her back, right on the sides. You always go on the sides of the vertebrae, never directly on the spinous processes. That's a no-no. So you can do the elephant walking on her back. And again, you can do transition, always transition with efflorage. Make sure you transition. So you can do some petrissage right here, all the way down her back, up her back. You can do some cross fiber strokes on her back and kind of squeeze a little bit. This kind of squeezes the organs a little bit. So this is really good for children that, you know, maybe uh, have some problems with their lungs. Oh, let me show you another one that you can do some tapping the elephant walking, but a little bit harder on the upper portion, especially if they've had a cough. And this cupping too, this really brings up the phlegm. If you do a little bit of tapping where you make noise, this really helps the kids cough and get that phlegm out of their lungs. So that's one of the techniques that you can use. The cross fiber, the long effleurage, Just make sure you get all of the shoulder right here, all of her shoulder, all the way up to her neck. Nice, long, smooth strokes. You can do the little snake going down her back and going up her back. And on the opposite side, you always go on the side of the spine, never right on it. And you can wiggle it. opposite raking. If you have a child that's squirming, you know, you can stop that and go to a different area, maybe to her shoulder to kind of help her relax a little bit more. You don't want to overdo it. And then maybe you can come back and do something different. So uh, if it's uncomfortable for them, don't overdo it. So if they are very ticklish and squirmy, then you just go to a long stroke. Go to the long strokes and long smoothing strokes. You can come up to their shoulder and just work their shoulder out. And you might be able to go back to some of those other areas, but be mindful and respectful of the cues that the child is giving you, okay? This is about respecting the space of the child and um, making sure that they have a good experience, especially if it's the first massage, you want to make sure that you have a good experience. I also wanted to show you that I forgot to show you earlier, this is important. You want to do friction between the scapulas because a lot of the kids nowadays, they carry those heavy backpacks and it just, I, I just don't understand. Like, I don't know about other parts of the country, but here in El Paso, I know that children sometimes don't have a locker. They carry that big old backpack and sometimes they just carry it on one shoulder and it's off. I've worked on children with scoliosis already because, I mean, I don't know if it's because of the backpacks, but I just really want to stress. One of the tips that I can give you is to make sure that the uh, backpack is even between the shoulder blades. The weight is carried right in the middle of the back and straighten up and make sure that you tighten the straps. A lot of the kids carry the backpack way low and that's really too much pressure for them on the low back. So you wanna make sure and have it higher. And one of the techniques that you can do for them is really do some friction between the shoulder blades. You know, work this area out. And like I said, no deep pressure, but you can really kind of even do with your fingers a little bit, get, you know, push down all the stress that they have between their scapulas down. And now we're gonna do kitty scratches. Kids love the kitty scratches. And you can always ask the child, which one's your favorite? The kitty scratches or the spider kisses. <laughs> and you can always do a little bit extra of something that they like. Spider kisses, angel kisses. <laughs> She's just ticklish. 
today. And remember, these are nerve ending strokes. Very important to let the body know that it can go back and relax and bring the body back to parasympathetic system. So parasympathetic is the relaxing one. Little angel wings with the back of your fingertips. Large angel wings because she's got big wings because she's an angel. The back of your fingertips just slightly touching. And then you've got just some nerve ending strokes right here to really help her relax. And you always want to have your own touch as to how you finish the massage. I always end it with me putting, you know, rubbing my hands together, putting all that good energy back in them. So then I just end. And this way they know that they know that you're finished. You put your hands on them. I always say a little prayer meditation. So that's it, guys. I hope you've enjoyed our kids' videos. And don't forget to subscribe and look me up on Instagram. I have a new Facebook account. And follow me on YouTube, please. And the links are going to be below if you want to check out Capacitar and also some of the Isogenics oils. So till the next time, create a good day. My, my Grandma Coco braids are not letting me work today. <laughs> I'm not used to working with hair. Paying attention. Paying attention. Like, pay attention to your teacher. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing okay? Was that too hard? Was that too hard? It's perfectly fine. It's perfectly fine? Okay. Okay. I'm glad it was perfectly fine. Stop squirming. Bring the body back to... Uh, Wow, my mind just went blank. So I'm going to show you on Mama, what's your Melda? Oh, so I'm going to show you on Mama Melda how to massage her arms. Cut. Wait, okay, so wait, okay, so let me continue here. <laughs>